in this segment, I'm going to interview Amin Nurani from ABN Corporation. Amin always, like you know, he played a very, very important part uh, in this program, Buy Low and Sell High, by giving such an amazing tips uh, from account perspective and from all other uh, professional uh, accounting. His feedback uh, from his clients, his credibility, and uh, his knowledge about his profession is definitely make him stand above the crowd. He recently came back from, uh, from Pakistan and he went there for a very noble cause and he did spend about a month there. Let's discuss with him about his trip, about the cause he went there for and then we can discuss with him like you know some questions which will be directly benefit all of you. I mean, how are you? Wonderful, Zia. Thank you very much for uh, uh, for joining us at Buy Low, Sell High. Uh, over the years, uh, your appearance in the program is definitely a great value for all of us to viewers as well. Uh, you just recently came back from Pakistan. So first of all, um, Zia, um, thank you very much for, for having confidence in me about my firm and uh, um, also recommending and referring uh, the clients and your family and friends to me. I am very much obliged and honored. Thank you. As you said that I just came from Pakistan and for a noble cause. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned it to you or not. I left Pakistan 26 years back, right? Okay. And now uh, I feel that it is the time to, to give some of the time and resources back to the country, right? Um, so myself and my other two friends have decided to open a school in Pakistan okay. for an early uh, childhood education yeah. because uh, whatever the situation in Pakistan at this point in time, uh, we believe very strongly that the growth of a child starts from the birth till six years. Whatever has been taught to, to the child that has been engraved in his mind and that basically the person becomes. So that is the reason why we have chosen this uh, uh, this cause, and uh, we have opened a school over there uh, for early learning uh, as an early learning center. Uh, my wife is a Montessori teacher; she is teaching for the last thirty years, so she is also helping us in this cause. And uh, I recently went there, and we have opened the school. So the the idea is basically the school is in a is in a prime location, and uh, we are going to cater the mainstream. Um, uh, children and yep. provide them a very high level of uh, uh, quality education and uh, basically we will also replicate the same level to the underprivileged uh, society. So mm -hmm. the idea is that in the morning we are going to uh, cater the mainstream yep. and then ultimately in the afternoon uh, we are going to uh, give the same quality education, same environment to, to the underprivileged. And uh, the income stream to support that underprivileged is going to be from the endowment fund which we have established and the people can, can give to that endowment fund or also to sponsor a child on an individual basis or maybe half child, quarter child, one child, whatever the, their uh, wishes. And also when the mainstream school is going to become profitable, all the income will go towards that underprivileged. Oh, so that is, the, uh, yeah, that is the idea. Uh, school has already been uh, open. And uh, from 1st September, our first batch is, is happening. No, definitely. I'm so happy uh, for you and for this cause and wish you good luck uh, uh, with this school, like, you know, the direction you guys are heading towards. And uh, again, like, you know, it's our prayers are with you uh, that you can definitely take this school to the next step. Thank you. Let's come back to, to Toronto now. Uh, yeah, we did cover a lots of uh, different topics when it comes to guidelines, taxes, accounting, so many things, right? And you know, viewers attaching with us, uh, like you know, every week, every day. This is such a diversified country, and 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 people, families, they do migrate in this country. Uh, end of the day, if I can say to conclude what has been said in the past and as a journal topic what you would advise to viewers? Zia, um, you know that I believe that we have done 
uh, now more than 20 episodes uh, in uh, in your program right and we have discussed individually uh, topics individual topics and and even then we could not cover the individual topics within the time framework exactly. so basically it is very very complex and uh, lengthy discussion however just to give a brief idea uh, to to invest in a in a in a real state what it takes from the accounting and from the tax perspective so let me first uh, 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 start with the the intention of the buyer right so when the buyer buys any real estate whether he is buying for as a principal residence or is buying for the investment purpose. So yeah. that is the primary question we have to decide whether what it's come from. Yeah. If it is a primary residence in that situation, uh, the, the, the laws are very different than the investments. So the first and most important thing is, which is very common and complex these days, is the HST implication. Yes. Now also depend whether the person is buying a resale property or if it is a, buying a brand new property. So as you know that in a brand new property, there is an HST implication on it. However, CRA has given the rebate up to certain limits depending yes. on, on, the, on the cost of the, of the property. And we have discussed that in the past. And if yeah. viewers want to go, they can go and search the YouTube. And I'm not sure which episode we have discussed yeah. about it, but in detail, there is a whole full-fledged topic in it. But the HST implication is for the principal buyer that is the rebate which the CRA gives and that's we have to apply uh, which we have to tell to the builder that this is the principal residence and and uh, a builder apply on our behalf so you don't have to pay any HST implication on it so you have to pay the whatever the exemption is there which uh, uh, builder gets is from the CRA yeah. and whatever is not exempted that is the part of the cost anyways yeah. so you don't have to worry about the HST part if it is for the principal residence if it is for the for the investment purpose then the hst is applicable you have to pay the hst to cra however if you are investing that property for minimum one year if it is a brand new property then in that situation you get the full rebate whatever you have paid to the cra that is is uh, recoverable from from the cra yeah. so that is the big advantage of the investment right so basically the idea was to discourage the flipping of the properties exactly. what everybody was doing in the past right so that is that is uh, so far as hst is concerned so far as taxable implication is concerned it also depends whether it is for the principal residence and if whether it is an investment property if it is a principal residence the there is no taxable advantage on a yearly basis when you file tax returns however the biggest tax advantage for the principal residence when you sell it there is no tax on the capital gain it is fully exempted yeah. if it is an investment property then the then the capital gain is 50 percent 50 percent of the capital gain will be included in your individual income and then you have to tax on an individual income but however when you file your yearly tax returns whatever the expenses related to to managing that property it's allowable we have discussed in the past such as capital cost allowance that is depreciation of the property it is the mortgage interest is allowable if it is a condo then it is a condo fees is allowable um, any repair and maintenance anything which is related to maintaining the property it is you can deduct it from the from the property however it is very important that if you have claimed the capital cost allowance in that situation you cannot claim that property again as a principal residence so keep that in mind right so this is basically the main difference now when you buy the property it also at the point in time the structure is also very important whether you want to buy i'm talking about in if you are buying it for the investment purpose whether you want to buy it on an on an individual basis or you want to put that into the corporation if you are buying a couple of property and then it is okay that you can put that into the individual investment but if you're buying if your intentions are more than one property i would highly recommend to put that under the umbrella of the corporations yeah. because there are many tax advantages on the the liability side as well as tax advantage on the on the corporate uh, if you're putting that into the corporate side so basically that is the overall impact yeah. that related to the if somebody is interested in in a buying a, a real estate right? no so, great yeah thank you i mean thank you very much for your uh, detailed uh, discussion i know time is uh, limited viewers if you really want to discuss further and you're going to go from this point onward 
and you want to structure your own portfolio in in a real estate world it's very important that you have to meet to I mean on one-to-one -one basis we'll go for a quick break stay with us <laughs> 